An act of violence at a Wilmington school not known for violence. This is a unforeseen and unbelievable tragedy for the family. Howard High School holds a significant place in Delaware history. I don't think we would have gotten to the point where we actually broke down the barriers of race were it not for Howard High School. The candidates running for Wilmington mayor were supposed to talk about violence that night. We'll focus on that topic this week in the hope that a dialogue will produce a solution. I've never seen never all the that. problems like we're having now. And so we need prayer back in school. God has got to be the one who's large and in charge. Welcome to FIRST. I'm Nichelle Polston, Mark Eichmann, Shirley Min, and Avi Wolfman Arendt will be here during the course of the next half hour as we explore Wilmington's violent situation. We will focus on the death last week of Amy Joyner Francis as a jumping off point for the conversation. Some of that conversation started on the school grounds this week as Howard High School of Technology looks to heal from this death. We need prayer in school ASAP. That's the simple solution to school violence according to community leaders. Several prayer vigils have been held at Howard High after a school fight turned deadly on April 21st. Now a community mourns the untimely death of 16-year-old Amy Joyner Francis. If we get prayer back in school, I believe some mindsets, people will change. In times like this, Minister Margaret Guy, who leads the Stop the Violence Prayer Chain Foundation, calls on community healing through prayer since it's banned in schools. And I graduated from Howard High, so this is my, you know, school. And it just broke my heart, just, just feeling the pain of the family, knowing that a mother lost a, a child, you know, another mother lost a child. While police continue to investigate the assault that happened here among students, City Council President Theo Gregory believes a look at conflict resolution is necessary. For me, in order to fix this, you got to do prevention, which stop kids from going down that road. If they're going down that road, then you have to do intervention to teach borders and conflict resolution. And then if they're going down that road and you can't intervene, then law enforcement. However, Gregory believes this is a job for the state, churches, youth centers, city officials, and parents. I think that it's a tragedy all the way around. The young lady that lost her life certainly cannot be recaptured. And the young lady or ladies that were involved in the altercation, they have to live with this for the rest of their life. It's not so much the judicial process that they're going to be confronted with, but it's going to be the, the, just the, the thinking and living with the fact that they took somebody else's life. My heart is broken, and I went through this twice before uh, as a young man growing up, uh, seeing this type of violence happen. But again, you know, my heart bleeds for the family, and none of us in this room knows what that family has gone through. We've got to be there for them. That's where we need to be, and these children of this school. The deadly school fight immediately made national headlines. Several celebrities posted the story on social media, including Emmy-nominated actress Niecy Nash. Meanwhile, that's not the kind of attention City Councilman Darius Brown welcomes. So he led a community town hall meeting to take questions, ideas, and comments from residents. But what really concerns me is the fact that Wilmington was considered Murder Town, USA. Now, what do you think we're going to be called after Thurston? Patty Daly Lewis of the Bo Biden Foundation delivered a strong message related to the Howard High tragedy that's believed to be captured on cell phone video. Young adults, they need to be taught intervention skills. Is it really necessary to video every single thing we see? Or is it necessary, is it necessary to step up and say, not in my school, not in my community, not in my state? 
no matter how many ideas leaders come up with in the wake of France's death. One thing is certain for everyone. Residents say community dialogue and unity must be ongoing and not when tragedy hits close to home. We all got to learn to come together. It takes a village to raise a child. Wilmington Police Chief Bobby Cummings was also at Brown's town hall meeting. He said charges could be filed pending autopsy reports. As far as the students at Howard High School, grief counselors have been on site since the tragedy, helping students cope with France's death. The second debate among the Democrats who want to be Wilmington mayor was supposed to take place at Howard High School on April 21st. WHYY and the News Journal canceled the debate because of Amy Joyner France's death. We are going to devote this next segment to the Wilmington violence issue. Thanks so much, Nichelle. Now, the irony of this attack is that it took place on the same day eight Democrats running for Wilmington mayor in the September primary were supposed to debate that night inside the school. The topic was the violence and the crime rate in the city of Wilmington. Let's take a couple of minutes to look at what might be the root cause of violence in Delaware's largest city. We're joined by Yasser Payne, a University of Delaware professor in the Black American Studies Department and former Wilmington mayor, Jim Baker. Mayor Baker, we are gonna start with you. And before you had left office, you had talked a lot about poverty and lack of opportunities mm -hmm. being among the root causes. Right. Do you still feel that way, seeing as violence remains a big problem in the city? Well, sure it is because we haven't done anything about any of those other problems and they've been hit and miss or they've been badly done and there's no consideration uh, where you really are looking at the cause of the problems as much as you are looking at the end result and then you say to the police go out there and stop this are poverty and lack of uh, lack of opportunities still you believe oh, yes. among the root no causes? question about it but there's a lot of other things failed education system uh, the, the prison system and what happens to people while they're in there and when they come out. Uh, you've got so many people on probation and there's a 75% recidivism rate mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. Delaware. Mm -hmm. So you have 2,000 people on probation in the city of Wilmington, 7,000 in Newcastle County, that's 9,000 people. Take the figure, who's gonna commit another crime? 75% of that 9,000 is gonna go back to prison. The crisis just keeps going and going and going. This is 20 some years we've been arguing about police. Mm, 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 mm. Believe it, 20 some years you've been talking about deployment, a new chief, a new division, a new this, mm -hmm. a new that, and it's gonna solve the crime problem. That's just nonsense and it's pipe dreaming and it's avoidance of the reality. Well, we're going to touch on that later, but Yasser, I do want to get yeah. to you. We, you had done a grassroots study, the People's Report, that focused yeah. on a lot of the issues that Mayor Baker just spoke about. Um, do you think that the violence is a problem just largely focused among the minority community, or is it a generational thing? No, I don't think it's generational. Um, by all accounts, and definitely when we look at the historical evidence, um, you know, and this is going back to the 1600s, and I underscore this in a lot of my work, there is a long legacy of violence in our country, in and out of black communities. But definitely there is a, uh, a real vibrant legacy um, and or history of crime in the black community. I point to uh, W.B. Du Bois' Souls of Black Folk, 1903 publication, which describes um, a lot of violence throughout the country. Also his 1899 publication, Philadelphia Negro, where he's capturing a lot of the violence that's taking place in black Philadelphia. He's talking a lot about uh, Delaware as well. But it's been with us for a very long time. And really quickly, I just want to underscore, particularly as it relates to Amy Joyner Francis, um, who I send my deepest consoles, condolences to, um, I send yeah. to her family. Um, yeah. I, think, I think violence is also, and we've described it this way too, um, a form of coping mm -hmm. and, and um, a form of dealing, right? So not that violence is right, not that we're justifying it, but um, you know, our youth and, and, and adults have learned, have been socialized, um, I might add, to understand violence, uh, to use and engage in violence as a way of dealing with problems or entering into conflict resolution. They don't have a healthier way to cope. They don't, yeah. were never taught a healthier way to cope. Yeah, so I think, you know, being taught in a, it's, it's more, I, I would argue, the better way to understand it is um, there are, there's a socialization mm -hmm. around violence. Um, so it's, it's embedded in the society okay. and or, um, or in our local neighborhoods. Mm. Um, and it extends, right, out, it's, it's, we see it in and out of black communities. 
So can you tie what happened at Howard High School to Amy Joyner Francis to the general issue of violence within the city of Wilmington? Is oh, there sure. a direct link? Oh, sure. I mean, um, uh, young ladies or males are not exempt from mm -hmm. these mental issues that we're talking about because of their value systems that come and they're embedded into the person by the time they're teenagers. It's like me going to you now and telling you, you know, you really ought to change your life. I think you're going in the wrong direction. And you look at me like I'm crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, who, who, who does he think he is coming up here? You need early intervention at, at the earliest ages for children, and you need a consistency. Do you realize the last statistic I had was only ten, one out of 10 African Americans graduate from college? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're not dealing with the race problem at all. All we're doing is avoiding it because it's f entracted so deeply in American consciousness and social structure and economics and everything else. Mm -hmm. We can't get rid of it. You know, you, you touched on Mayor Baker earlier, how Mayor Dennis Williams has sort of tried a lot of things, community mm -hmm. policing. He's named a new police chief in Bobby Cummings. He's brought mm -hmm. on the former Philly top cop, Charles Ramsey. What's missing from this if it's not gonna be a solution? He's mm -hmm. got no resources. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, is Meaning it all- money? He doesn't have money to work? Not somewhere. just money, it's uh -huh. money is one. But it's also people who have the skills to really deal with the various aspects of the problem because no one agency or person is going to deal with all of it. It's needy. We need people combined together. When we look at Howard High and we look at Amy Joyner Francis, um, keep in mind, and by all accounts, from what we know, right, these are, this is a highly unusual isolated incident. Mm -hmm. uh, by all accounts, the, these are high performing students, mm -hmm. right, at a mostly high performing school, mm -hmm. right, and a perfect storm of events just came crashing together. Um, still, you know, uh, folk involved need to be held accountable. I think what can be done right now, right, I think uh, for the uh, first, I think three things can be done, but first, there needs to be a participatory response, and, and that needs to occur on two levels. I think inside schools, the first level, right, school officials, administrators need to be working with parents, uh, uh, students, also local residents, right, to kind of think through um, um, a set of activities and or an intervention that would be most appropriate for the school. Definitely, um, 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 they need to bring in traditional and non-traditional forms of counseling. Um, um, so by non-traditional, I mean there needs to be youth-led and organized counseling, okay. individual and group counseling, in addition to other activities, right? I think in addition to that, the arts need to be brought, need mm -hmm. to be brought in, right? So I mm -hmm. think lots of healing and coping mm -hmm. um, um, can take place. Keep in mind, right, from music to 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 uh, uh, poetry, but also to oil paintings and graffiti and sneaker art. But around all of this, so we need to be organizing art exhibitions um, as well. I do also think, right, opportunity more broadly. Uh, we need to figure out a way at the state, county, city level to bring more resources to these local neighborhoods. So again, I don't think there's a one-to-one -one match like uh, uh, these children came from a street identified juvenile justice background and, and then that led to this, this situation. I do think though there is a larger issue of dis-opportunity, right, um, 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 that, is impacting, that, is, that, is, that is impacting and affecting uh, and creating personal, social, and structural levels of trauma right, in different ways. And then that trauma is also being brought inside schools by, by, by a number of these youth. So I think the counseling and group sessions needs to also deal with the personal, social, and structural trauma as well. And I think efforts are being made, we just all need to talk to each other. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. I would rather have the money and, yeah. stop, <laughs> and stop all the doggone talking, because mm -hmm. we've got too much, too much talking and mm -hmm. not enough. I mean, the, the things you're talking about are necessary and then you need to bring again uh, together a lot of disciplines yeah. that work together on saying this, these different institutions, these different kinds of communities need the resources. And if you don't yes, do sir. it, you're going to keep seeing it. Okay, we're going to yes, have sir. to end it here. Jim Baker was the mayor of Wilmington for 12 years. Thank you so much for your expertise. Mm -hmm. Yasser Payne teaches at the University of Delaware. You can read his extensive People's Report when you go to peoplesreport.com. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. In all of the coverage on the death of Amy Joyner Francis on April 21st, there was a theme that this was an isolated incident. And while it was an undeniably violent act that put the school and the city in a negative spotlight, it should be noted that historically Howard High School has been at the forefront of a lot of positive headlines.
the Vice President of the United States, Joe Biden. Howard High School played host to Vice President Joe Biden and U.S. Education Secretary Arne Duncan in March of 2011. In his speech, Biden reflected on the history of Howard and what the future may hold for its students. Let me tell you something, man. An awful lot of people whose shoulders we're standing on, they come out of this proud tradition of Howard High School. Those shoulders belong to civil rights leaders like attorney Lewis Redding, who fought to integrate schools in the first state and beyond. This is where I got started in the civil rights movement. This is where I met some of the most impressive men and women I ever met in my life. They were at Howard High School. We used to have meetings at Howard High School figuring out how we're going to desegregate the Queen Theater and the, and the, the Rialto and the movie theaters downtown. A lot of people came out of here. A lot of people came out of here when no one gave them a chance, I might add. That integration fight led to Howard students becoming a part of the landmark Brown versus Board of Education case before the U.S. Supreme Court. This was, this was a place that people dream. This is the place that people change things. And I might add, I don't think we would have gotten to the point where we actually broke down the barriers of race were it not for Howard High School. Howard is also the alma mater of NFL defensive tackle Devin Still. I came from that city. I grew up in Wilmington. I walked the streets that, you know, most of the kids there did, and I walked the hallways and sat in the same classrooms as the kids at Howard. You know, and I, I just had the mindset that I wasn't going to let the negative things around me, you know, impact what I was going to become in life. You know, people just have to stay focused and stay on the course. Stop spending so much time worrying about you know, trying to be tough and all that other stuff. Just put your focus on you know, changing who you are as a person so you can change your family's outcome. Still's daughter, Leah, and her battle with cancer has inspired many. And inspiring was exactly what Biden hoped to do during his Howard High visit. There's no reason why every single kid here at this high school can't do as well as anybody in any other high school if we set the bar high enough and we give you the resources to get you. That's why we're here today. That's why we're here today. In 2011, Howard High School of Technology was named the Partnership Zone School because of falling test scores. But as of 2015, 80% of 10th graders were deemed proficient on statewide math and reading tests. U.S. Secretary of Education Arne Duncan was back at Howard again last year to help celebrate that success. As one of the interview subjects in Nichelle's story said, this incident has once again put a spotlight on Wilmington. Hillary Clinton brought it up at a pre-primary rally she held at Wilmington at the Queen Theater. And we've got to work with young people who I think are truly being put at risk. It was heartbreaking to hear about the young woman, Amy Anita Joyner Francis, who was killed here in Wilmington the other day in a fight. We can't let this go on. We've got to, from a very early age, help our children and then help young people. Our conversation on how to help kids will continue right after this short timeout. As we record our broadcast this week, there is still a question of how many students were involved in the Howard High School of Technology incident and exactly what happened. The tragic story certainly opens up all types of discussions that focus on conflict resolution and intervention. Faye Blake, who works with teenage students in Sussex County and run the program Pathways to Success, is here with us to talk about how such incidents could be prevented and more. Thanks for joining us. You're welcome. Thanks for having me here. Sure. Now, certainly the incident at Wilmington's Howard High School can happen anywhere. In all the years you've worked with students, have you ever witnessed anything similar to that incident? And if so, how did you handle it? Um, one of the things that I'm going to say is that I did, I have not in, um, actually seen anything as tragic as this, but one of the things that we all know is that bullying and aggressive behavior is um, just preeminent throughout all of our high schools. Um, it is a nationwide epidemic, it really is. Mm -hmm. um, and in handling situations like that, the first thing that I say is listen. You have to listen to the students. Oftentimes they will say things to you and you think, okay, I'll just slough it off, but you really do need to listen to what they're saying, especially if they start talking about being afraid, um, if they start changing their patterns, especially if they're walking home from school and all of a sudden 
sudden they start walking home a different way, um, not wanting to go to certain classes. There are any number of things that you need to do. And then in listening, you then have to act. It is our responsibility as mentors, as educators, as leaders in our communities, and officials throughout the government to make sure that our children are safe. So how important is conflict resolution in our schools? And you said it's sort of, it, it can't work alone, you mentioned earlier. Right. Conflict resolution is absolutely important. One of the things that I think is that schools that actually have conflict resolution training for all of their students um, are far better equipped to deal with the actual um, ills of bullying, if you will. Because what it does is it helps students recognize when it's not just simply a disagreement, but now it has escalated into something that's more hurtful and harmful to to that student. And it takes two parties, you mentioned. Right. Conflict resolution is something where if two parties have a disagreement, then they have a vested interest in wanting to um, solve that particular problem. When we start talking about aggressive behavior and bullying, um, there is not the vested interest on the bullier's part to actually change. Because unfortunately, the bullier receives or gets power from having power over someone else. And so you have a situation where someone who could be profiled as quiet, um, really by themselves, they oftentimes are prey to people who bully. Yeah. Um, and they often don't tell anyone. I was at a, a town hall meeting not long ago and uh, a lot of the people in the audience said it's up to the parents to teach good, positive, uh, moral behavior. Mm -hmm. City Councilman uh, Theo Gregory said, hey, it's up to the state churches, youth centers, mm -hmm. and everyone else. And you sort of, you seem to agree with that. It takes a village. I do. I agree that it takes every one of us. And I'm not going to just single out parents or administrators or officials or school officials or teachers. I'm saying every one of us that are interacting with children on a regular basis need to help empower them. We need to talk to them about what bullying looks like. We need to role play with them so that they understand. We need to help them articulate what's happening with them. We have to do two things. One, it is tragic what happened mm -hmm. um, with um, Amy Joyner Francis. It is such a tragedy to lose such a young life. And one of the things that we have to do is to absolutely mourn that, but we also need to figure out what are we going to do? What can we do? And it's a two-pronged approach. We have to look at those kids who are being victimized, and we also have to pay attention to those kids who are the victimizers. Thanks, Faye Blake, for taking time to be here. Next, we have Abby Wolfman Eric, who has more, and will talk to us about intervention programs that were taken out of Howard High School. One of the more striking things to come out of the death of Amy Joyner Francis is the way people have come together to demonstrate why this act can't be tolerated, but also to show there are better things happening in the community. To wrap up our conversation for this week's first, we've invited Pastor Derek Johnson from Joshua Harvest Church. Many people know him as Pastor D. Welcome, Pastor. Oh, thank you. Thank and you I, for having me. I wanted to start the conversation here. You have worked extensively with youth and on issues of youth violence, you had a program called CELEB. Yes. Tell me a little bit about the program and what you guys were trying to accomplish. Well, the acronym CELEB uh, stands for Cognitive, Emotional Learning, and Esteem Building. And it came about because when Wilmington had a very obvious girl gang violence problem, uh, the front page featured uh, some tracks of hair that had been snatched out of the head by a girl gang and a mother had been ordered beat up in her home and dragged out by some 14, 15 year old girls. These girls uh, were attendees of the Red Clay Consolidated School District and a uh, superintendent of the schools, Mer Doggerty, his name is. And while it should not mention, I, me, me, uh, matter, I will mention that he, he is a white male. He knew about me um, and what I did in the community. He came into the community and like somebody looking for drugs 
and went to all the tough areas. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody know where to find Pastor D? Mm -hmm. He found me and he said, I need you for my kids. And together we developed uh, this program, Celeb, and took it into the Red Clay Consolidated And so what did, you, what did you do with the students? You, I, I understand you, you sought out students who were sort of on the fringes, who are at the yeah. risk of basically falling off the path, Yeah. and you intervened, and it was, was it focused specifically with girls? Yeah, we had uh, 65 children per school, four, four schools uh, for six months, and those 65 were identified by the uh, principal, by the school staff, mm -hmm. as predisposition predispos toward violence or expulsion. Yeah. Um, the Superior Court played a part. One of the field trips was they would hear uh, some talk from the Superior Court. Police played a part because they would uh, have a day when we took them uh, to, to talk with the police. Mm -hmm. And then our in-school uh, hour sessions with them. When, s when we see incidents where students are fighting, girls in particular, in school or out of school, what is, the, what is usually the root cause? And what, what do people who aren't living in Wilmington or aren't in the lives of teenagers not understand about the way they interact and the way these things foment and bubble up? I don't know if they don't understand the violence, but certainly they don't take re we don't take responsibility for the climate of hate. This girl group particularly, the young African-American girls, have extra dilemmas that they are beset with, such as, the boys uh, uh, are, the girls outnumber the boys seven to one. Uh, seven to one, one little girl, uh, who's gonna take me to the prom? Who's gonna take me uh, to the school dance? Who's gonna take me to that the football? That creates a lot of conflicts. Oh, absolutely. If you got one girl and, and uh, one boy, uh, I'm sorry, one girl and uh, one boy and six girls competing yeah. For his attention, let's face it, there's never been a generation of girls that had to compete with six other girls, and the little boys love it, of course, because yeah. they get to have six girlfriends. Is that serious? You're darn tootin'. Yeah. And nobody's helping them to deal with or explaining to them how you deal with this. Yeah, I think one of the, and we have to wrap it up here, but one of the things is maybe a little more focus on the issues girls are going through, going through with Absolutely. regards to violence, because we focus a lot on young men. Absolutely. Um, thank you so much, Derek Johnson, also known as Pastor D from Joshua Harvest Church. Going to thank you for your insight. Thank you for joining us. We're going to take one more time out, and then Shirley, Nichelle, and Mark will be back to wrap up this week's first. <laughs> Next week, we'll have one of the stories we promised for this week. Delaware has millions of dollars of art treasures. Where are they and why are they here? Some answers next time. An AI DuPont Children's Hospital could soon be at the forefront of genetic testing with help from a patient and her family who was saved by these efforts. Expect those stories and a peek inside the pages of Delaware Today magazine as well. That is first for this week. We hope you found this discussion informative. You can watch it again at whyy.org slash first. For Abby Wolfman Aaron, Shirley Mid, and Mark Eichmann, I'm Michelle Poston. We'll see you again next week. <laughs>